right, guys. So our penultimate topic here kind of sticks with the the movie theater industry and having to adapt and like things like that. You know, we talked about this last week, where the a bunch of filmmakers and film industry professionals put together a letter to Congress, pleading for you know help with uh, you know funding for the movie theater because you know throughout the whole pandemic and everything, half of them, not more than half of them, majority of them around the world have been shut down. There's been no new movies coming in for them, so like they're like at more risk now than ever than kind of going away permanently. And with that, uh, Patty Jenkins, the director of Wonder Woman, has came out and recently just kind of commented on this. And we're going to kind of pigeon toe this off of like jump through a couple things here. But I mean, Patty Jenkins is coming out and saying exactly what I was saying like last week that this will not be a reversible process. We could lose movie theater going forever. So this interview, this is a deadline if you want to go read the whole thing. And with that, if if you go back and watch our, our video from last week, it, the, the the theater is not getting any help here because there's just like a lot of uh, I don't, a lot of different things to come out of it, right? And like we were just kind of talking about in the previous topic, like with the the streaming services potentially, like they're they're doing different things now in light of this, uh, you know, current situation we're in with the pandemic. So like they're, you know, Disney Plus is doing the Mulan thing where you have to pay for this. And then some movies are like sold now are going straight to streaming, you know, like everyone's been having to adapt in some way. And one of the things that I was saying last week was that like a lot of people because of this like situation, because just human nature are going to be one, a lot more hesitant to go back to theaters when they do open. And like there are movies there, even if it is quote unquote safe, a lot of people are going to be used to the fact that they've just been able to get these movies at home. And I think that's kind of what she's uh, addressing with this. Like, it's going to be irre like irreversible at this point in time because, like, people are just, like, this is kind of my words meshing first. Like, people are just going to be used to not having to go out and do it. Like, pe some people out there have realized they, they don't need to because uh, they'll just wait for the movies to come out and all this stuff. And, like, we talked about this last, uh, last week, John, I knew you specifically too, because, like you said, you, uh, you and see Endgame like five times in theaters. You know, you like the theatrical experience, especially with love it. Exactly, it's, yeah. it's an irreplaceable thing. I think everybody can agree. Like some people may not appreciate it much, like a lot of other people, but I mean, it's 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 not the same to sit there and watch it at home. You know, it's just not the same. So, like, it's I, I definitely don't want anything to change with the movie theater. So, I'm hoping something comes of of this and like they do get the help that they need to like kind of i don't want to see the movie ex movie theater exhibition die like i don't want to so like but, but uh since we already kind of talked about all that from last week what are the what are your odds now that you think you think wonder woman's still coming out in theater is this supposed to come out december 25th because they've already in light of this pushed back the batman to 2022 so this was obviously coming out. That's uh, it's supposed to come out in 2021 anyway, right? So this was not like it's supposed to come out this year or anything. They've had some. They've had some issues on, on set, and uh, so they've had to push it back. Regardless, they've just been, you know, just like everyone says, these are uncertain times. They really are. These are <laughs> uncertain times. But uh, I mean, they, they, they kind of are though, because like I don't know at this point. Like anything could happen. The Batman's been pushed back. Like, Batman had COVID at one point, for F's sake. You know what I mean? Like, anything can happen these days. Like, the movie theaters could become extinct, you know? Like, so what do you think, what do you think about all this uh, coming out here? Got anything to comment on this? Am I the only one who's, like, concerned about it? I'm concerned about it, but it's just, like, at this point, it just keeps happening and happening and happening. And it's just, like, when at this point are we just movie theaters going to fly under the radar and not exist, you know? I don't want movie theaters to become drive-ins. So here, hey, drive-ins are great. Yeah, but no one goes anymore. That They're is not dead. true. Starlight sells out all the time because it's one. There's one. Where's the other one? Where's the other one? You're good. Well, and maybe maybe that's you know I mean? maybe that's what this does. Maybe this prompts more people to invest or, or start building some drive-ins. I just. I can't see this is such a huge revenue, such a huge business. 
Um, I don't think you can duplicate the revenue that's generated by the theater going experience oh, no. in, in direct to home video. I just don't think you can do that. Oh, I can't. No. Um, no way. So I could, I could easily see major studios scaling back for a couple years. And it could be that you don't, that, that a lot of cinemas close their doors and do, do what Cineworld is doing and shuttle their, or sh- shutter their door, their, their, their uh, I can't talk. Shutter Shut their, their doors, doors for yeah. for the foreseeable future, but then you know, come twenty twenty two, they reopen. I mean, maybe they're you know, you have to get. I mean, let's let you know, thinking about this logically before we ever get back to anything resembling normal, you have to have a vaccine. You have to feel. You have to have people that are comfortable with the vaccine, and you have to see the rate of transmission of the virus go way down. So, yeah, you're still looking at probably another year and a half or so before people see that. So maybe theaters and that's and that may even be a, a, you know, a optimistic timeline. So maybe it is. But I just don't see with it being such a giant revenue generator that they ever go away completely. You may you may see a downturn in them for a while. Um, you may see theaters do more inventive things. The theaters where I live are doing things like you can rent the theater out for a 100 bucks. Um, which I've considered doing because if I can take my family safely and have some friends and family that or some other friends and family that I know go and safely see a movie because it's just us in the theater. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, that feels like that's a hundred dollars worth. It's a hundred dollars worth file to me. Um, the other nice thing that they're doing, I mean, not only can you see movies that they're showing, you can bring your own movies now. Um, they'll, they'll allow you to walk in with a Blu-ray of your favorite film we out the theater for a hundred bucks and watch it on the giant screen with the nice, you know, digital projection and the nice sound system. <laughs> I'd be um, bringing some real weird films. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'd be bringing some real weird films, <laughs> some obscure well, stuff. So I just, I, 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 I understand the concern and I, I'm concerned to a certain extent. I don't think Wonder Woman releases in December. You already look at what Marvel's done. Marvel decided, Hey, look, we're, we're, we're abandoning 2020. 2020 is a lost cause. Um, Black Widow's not coming out in November. We're pushing her all the way back until May of next year. I think Wonder Woman sees the same thing. I think I think a lot of people mis, miscalculated how long this was going to take to recover from and how, how long it would take people to feel comfortable going back, um, even with the additional precautions and stuff. And um, I think you're seeing that with these new release dates. I just don't. I don't think you see it with Wonder Woman. I, I I understand. I mean, Patty Jenkins and the filmmakers that we talked about last week. This is their livelihood. So yeah, they're and and they're they love movies. I mean, I I don't I put my love of movies up against theirs any day of the week. I just don't happen to have their talent. But still, they right. they obviously love movies, and so this is a huge concern to them. It's a huge concern to me. I just think realistically. Um, when you're talking about the amount of money that these movies make, I mean, you're talking a billion dollars, a billion with a B for movies like Endgame and multiple, you know, billions in some cases. I just don't see how that goes away completely forever just because theaters have to close for a period of time. Um, well, I think the bigger problem is though is like without the without them getting any government assistance because that's the thing like they were declared non-essential throughout this so they haven't sure. really qualified for any like government funding to keep them afloat through all this stuff. That's like the biggest problem. That's what the like that's letter been super for Congress. Tough yeah, so it's like the and this was what I kind of commented on last week was just like these these facilities, the movie theaters themselves, just structurally are massive places. Unless it's like a small mom and pop theater, but it's still going to be a bigger building to have a theater in. And these places, especially in California and New York, the real estate value alone is astronomical. Like I forget what the I forget what the monthly rent on one was in California, but it was something where it was like tens of thousands of dollars a month just for them to have the building, like the rent fee. And like mm-hmm. they're closed. Like yeah. they, they're getting no revenue. What do you do in that situation? Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's like, just... and that's the problem. Like it's they 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 could be closed, and I like. I feel like in the end, if if the movie theaters just closed down, like yeah, and, and then they could just spin back up in two years, people would go. But the problem is, if they don't get help, the, they're literally not going to be there. You know what I mean? Like, because like the buildings, Stand- like you know what I mean? Like they get the landowners well, need rent, whatever. 
but given the given the current circumstances, what's going to replace them? Retail stores that people don't feel comfortable. Retail's not booming. I, I just I don't see it being a as easy as easy a death uh, death song as just okay. They can't they can't release new movies. They can't pay their rents. They're kick it. They're kicked out and. The, those those real estate owners turn around and turn those into brick and mortar stores or bars and restaurants, which are also hurting. I just, you know, at some point, I think, I hate to say it, but everybody's got to come together and everybody's going to share in the cost of, of, of what's happening, right? The economic costs that are affecting everybody right now. Yeah. For oh, sure. yeah, absolutely. That's what I, I had always pictured if anyone was going to come in and save the theaters it would probably be the studios like they all come yeah. in and you would like, think but i mean the problem is though like we were talking about before like they work on borrowed money themselves like they don't have like yeah they made two and a half billion dollars with avengers but they were getting loans from banks to like, how many other movies did marvel and disney make at the same time they were making avengers they spent 300 million dollars just to make avengers and then they had to market it so it ended up being like a 450 dollar 450 million dollar spend <laughs> on avengers endgame along with all the other movies and people like theme parks and all the shit they have to pay for on a regular basis like they don't have that money just like here let me Bob, sure. Bob Iger doesn't pull out his checkbook and just or maybe he probably could at some point. <laughs> he could probably finance at least one or two of them out of pocket, but that's just not how it works. So, like, that's kind of like a problem. And I think, like, the bigger problem is like where I, I, I do like that they at least all banded together. A lot of these major, like, studios and film industry professionals banded together to at least get that letter to Congress because, like, it, I think the real shame and, like, the real, like, downside is that, like, They've just received zero help because they were deemed non-essential. Like the way yeah. that whole bill was structured, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get political by any means. It, it, it kind of rammed them right in the rear. You know what I mean? Like they were like, it's it's not really their fault that any of this happened. But like like you're saying, John, like they 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 are far too profitable and affect way too many people. It's like glo It's a worldwide industry. Like it's not like it's just some like USA thing that like. Oh, it's like a theme park closes down. Is it sad? Yeah, but someone else will probably just buy it when they do it. You know, like another theme park. Yeah, like the the movie theater thing is just like because the problem is too, at least where I'm coming from with is like I like AMC theaters. If AMC goes under, I can't go to AMC theaters anymore. That means I don't get AMC a list. I can't go and do it. Like someone else is gonna like come and take its place. But there's a reason people have their favorite theaters. Like I, I like AMC theaters. I don't want to. I don't want to have to go to like some other theater just because it's there. You have a little different experience than I do. I mean, where I live, we've had our theaters have changed hands Some four times. Thing. Four times in the past, like fifteen, twenty years. So I've constantly dealt with new theater owners or theater experiences. Right. Um, so I have not I'm not as I'm not as brand loyal as you are at this oh, point. Oh, I'm not really I was brand gonna say what is it about AMC? Huh? What is AMC, it AMC? Well, the one here is like a dine-in and they have the cinema the, the Dolby like Atmos oh, screen yeah. in there and or sound and with the big like laser screen and everything. Yeah. So like the theater there and that one it used to be some other like third party Rave. I don't know the name of it. No, this one was this is in uh Anderson. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This was so. This one used to be something else, but like uh, it, it got. Actually, no. This was a for AMC like built theater there, but then we have another one that was a showcase cinema, which is like I think gone everywhere now. Which yeah, I really like showcase. It was bad. It was fine. Nostalgic. But, yeah, but then that turned into a rave theater, and then 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 now it's a cinema. It's a cinema theater, and then uh. I think that's it. That's it. So, I mean, I, I'm used to them turning over, but the AMC one has been my best experience. So that's why, and they have the, the AMC A-list, which is the best subscription plan for your money. Like, Regal yeah. Unlimited is not as good as a plan as A-list is. It's a, it's a good plan if you have a Regal Cinema and that's all you have, then yeah, get it. If, if same with, like, I think Cinemark has their own plan now too, and it's like, if that's your choice, then get it. But it's not, neither of them are as good as the A-list plan. And the A-list theaters, or the AMC theaters, I 
every one I've been to has been a better experience than the other ones I've been to. So I don't, there, there, I'm sure there's some out there that are just as good, but this is not from my experience yet. So that's why I don't want AMC to go under because yeah, I that like, makes sense. You know what I mean? Sure. But if I want to go see a movie and the only theater around is a mom and pop theater, I'm obviously going to that theater. Like, well, I, yeah, I'm going to the theater no matter what. Like, that's not the point. Well, at least when it's safe, <laughs> you know, like, but I don't know. So I definitely agree, though. I do not think Wonder Woman's hitting this December 25th release date. I think it's only a matter of time before it gets pushed back. I think it's really a matter of time before everybody just gives up on 2020. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we're all about there. Yeah, kind of emotionally, physically, financially, everybody should probably just give up on it. Mid-October, just call it. Just yeah. it's done. Yeah. Let's ride out these last two and a half months yeah. and, and watch The Mandalorian, watch WandaVision. Yeah, well, at least have those two things Turn the calendar. Out. Yeah. Turn the yeah. Cam- and, then, and then you can end it all off with soul, I guess, if you really want. Yeah. So in the end, Disney's going to have the best... I don't know what else is coming out, because the boys just ended. Like I, I, so, so we just have Mandalorian and WandaVision. Yeah, that's pretty much all we got. I don't think anything else is even coming out. But uh, mm-hmm. the, the Haunting of Blind Manor just dropped on Netflix. Mm. Did, did you watch Haunting of Hill House? Well, it's a good show. You should go watch it. They they did like an anthology. It's a horror series, but it's like it's not scary. But none of these movies scare me, so I'm not really a good. I'm not a good lit test because I'm going to tell you <laughs> no, it wasn't scary. But I'll tell you if it was a good movie. But this was a good show, and then they did a a sequel to it, but it's like an anthology thing. So it's not like so it's kind of like American Horror Story in that sense, where they get a lot of the same cast back. And thing. Yeah. So if you haven't seen. Oh. Haunting a Hill House, which is weird that you haven't, because it was it like blew up. Mike Flanagan created, written, wrote and directed the series, and he went on and he directed Doctor Sleep with Ewan McGregor, and he okay. now he does follow up. So he's really good in the horror space right now. So you should check that out. But uh, yeah, other than that, what, you guys got any thoughts on the Batman being delayed and Matrix Four being moved up? It sucks. Kind of is what it is. Yeah, I mean, but... I knew. I, I mean, I, w- I would have put money on Batman being moved. Um, I'm incredibly as a huge Batman fan. I'm I'm depressed. I also I also loved the idea of the Batman movie coming out in October. There's something about Batman in October that just feels right. That's true. Um, Especially but, if it has that long Halloween influence, like it's exactly. brutal to have. So. Yeah, very yeah. dark as so, it is. I mean, I was nice. uh, yeah, but um, but I also don't know that we've seen the last of Batman being moved now. The one reason I had heard that Batman was moved was because Dune, which was supposed to be coming out this year, was moved back to take Batman's spot. And as you're as you're seeing on that article there, this also dominoed a bunch of the other DC films with Flash being moved back, mm-hmm. uh, Shazam 2 being moved back. And uh, Well, shockingly enough, though, uh, this Matrix movie made like a four-month jump forward like it's yeah. coming out four months sooner now that's not a bad i mean that's like no that's a crazy like that's a long that's in the movie world four months is a long time yeah so like for them to be ready or like mm-hmm. uh, that means they were like they're borderline probably uh, like they're almost done with them you would think so like they have to be that's crazy because they were gonna have it out in december or no so it's a it's a six th- this is a six month jump, right? Or eight months. My math is too late. This is eight From April jump. to December. Yeah, eight, four. Yeah. Is that, no, no, it's four. April to December. January, February, March, April. That's four I'm months. the meme right now with Zach Galifianakis and all the numbers <laughs> coming. Yes. Because you got to think, it was going to come out in December, but now it's no, coming no, it out was gonna in come April. Out, it was going to come out in April. It's now coming out in December. Okay, yeah. You're going, yeah. So I read it you're, back. You're going there. back. Yes. That's why, that's why I was so confused because I initially said, yo, it's moving <laughs> up four months. And I look at it and I was like, no, wait a minute. This is moving up eight months. Holy <laughs> yeah. It is if you if you read it backwards, guys. It is. But yeah, okay. So yeah. But four months is still a big jump. So I think that's kind of like shocking. Well, here's here's the here's the 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 out of all this, the thing that I might be most disappointed in. Was Black Adam is now taken off the release schedule? Yeah, there's an this, this this rock Black Adam movie. It just isn't going to happen. 
as hyped as they, as they got me during DC fandom, I'm convinced this movie is never happy. I've been hearing about this movie. This is the mythical, this is the unicorn of DC movies. I know. This thing, I've been hearing about this movie for the past six years, and it's just never happened. It's all talk. Yeah. He, the, talk about a cursed franchise. It hasn't even started yet. I mean, it hasn't even been cursed. It's just like, it just hasn't happened. There's just been yeah. no movement on it. It's crazy. And Strange. Especially after the DC fandom stuff with it, it was like, it was like a four minute thing, but it was like, to me, it was the thing I talked about most afterward. Like as soon as I saw like JSA and Dr. Fate and all this, I was just like, dude, I never expected them to go this deep with this, this random ass black Adam movie that I already didn't think was going to happen. But like now this is real, like, holy shit. And they're, they're going, going deep with it. That was, that is very disappointing. Very disappointing. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to find it because all it's it's all the new news. I was trying to find what date, like when they had originally announced that The Rock was going to play. I feel like it was in like 2015. I think that it was, was nine. Years I feel like ago. it's. Yeah. I literally think yeah. it was nine years ago. Jeez. So anyway, that was that was very disappointing. The Flash, of course, got moved back. Um, well, apparently it was September 2014. Jeez. Okay. That's so, still yeah. a while back. I don't know if that's hundred percent accurate, but that's what this when that's, I when I Google it, that's, that's what it says. Sounds about right. Yeah. So I mean, we're talking six years. I mean, it was there. I I had hopes that we may see Black Adam show up in in Zack Snyder's Justice League at one point because we knew The Rock was going to play it. We knew the movie was coming. I thought, and and Jack and Zack Snyder's Justice League was still far enough out that I thought, well, maybe there'll be a Black Adam cameo. That'll be awesome. And uh, things just have gone it less than a snail's pace with that movie i know man and like i said if you if you guys didn't see the reveal of dc fandom with the black adam stuff like that was legit like the most hype thing for me there like the, the whole event was i mean the batman trailer at the end yeah you go out with a bang like it was good it delivered but like everything leading up to it was like this is cool yeah whatever whatever then the black adam stuff came out and i was just like damn this is gonna be good like, cause I, it's been so long. You're just teased about it. You hear no information about it. Then you get all these nice visuals and the rocks doing the rock thing. He's all charismatic and shit. And then boom, pictures of Dr. Fate. And I'm just like, this is going to be good. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's pretty much it. So I don't got anything else. You guys got anything else on this guys? All right. Well, again, the question is guys, what do you think? Are you, are you with, me and Patty Jenkins here, or where you know something, something's got to change with the like the you know these movie theaters. They need to get some help. They're not not change on their end. They need to get some help because I don't want the theatrical experience to die. I don't want it to go away. I don't want movie theaters that I've come to you know just love going to on a regular basis. I don't want them to close down. I don't want them to have to be replaced with something. I like everybody's a uh, you know we, we creatures are. We're, we humans, rather, are creatures of habit. You know what I mean? No one likes change. You know what I mean? I don't want to have my theater that I like going to keep changing into other things. and I don't want that. I just want to go and I want to sit down and watch the damn thing. That's all I want to do. So whatever it is, guys, you let us know in the comment section below. <laughs>